The Evils of Bread Addiction Why Wheat is an Unnatural Food Grains, except corn, are not provided by nature in a form for man to eat, they are not natural foods. Starch, which is their main constituent, must be transformed into fruit sugar, through the action of many different enzymes, before it may be assimilated. Therefore, it is a great saving of vital energy to obtain this fruit sugar directly from sweet fruit, such as grapes. Grain in all forms should be eliminated from the diet and replaced by the predigested carbohydrates of fruits. These are obtained in their natural raw state, balanced by organic minerals and vitamins, which counterbalance their acid-forming tendency, while the starch of grain, which is tasteless and indigestible when eaten raw, is usually cooked or baked after which its vitamins are destroyed and its minerals are inorganic and unassimilable. Whole wheat bread, therefore, contains absolutely no organic minerals or vitamins. The starch of nuts is more digestible than that of grain. Those who feed horses are careful never to give them grain unless they are doing heavy work, otherwise there is danger of the horse getting sick. Yet the horse, which is a herbivorous animal, is much better able to digest grain than can the human being. A horse fed on grain ages sooner than one fed on grass. The Argentinian gauchos, who subsist on a diet practically free from grain, live to the average age of 125 years. Herodotus relates that a Persian ambassador, when asked by the Ethiopians how long his people lived, answered, 70 years. The latter accounted for their short lives because of the fact that they ate dirt, which was the word used for bread. Bread eating, like alcohol drinking, is a perverse habit. Both indulgences result in the hardening of the arteries. The bacterial fermentation of bread changes part of the starch into alcohol. Once inside the stomach, more of the starch, by the action of the acid gastric juices, is transformed into alcohol. Bread eating is thus a vicarious form of alcoholic indulgence. Fermented bread is preferred by most people to the more hygienic unleavened bread because of its higher alcoholic content. Thus, the desire for bread and alcohol is the same. It is a desire for the eating of fermenting material whose toxins may stimulate the heart and the sex organs. The immediate effect of bread upon the human body, which is not noticeable when bread is habitually used, but is very evident when it is eaten for the first time in several months is very similar to that produced by a mild alcoholic, namely, brain stupor. This is due to the fact that bread, like alcohol, absorbs oxygen from the blood, which it saturates with carbonic acid. This leads to a precipitation of carbon in the cerebral capillaries, which obstructs the circulation of the brain. This does not occur when raw sweet corn, which is the only healthful form of grain, is eaten. Whole wheat bread is even more acid-forming than white bread. The latter one's constipating and mucus forming, while the sharp, bristle brain of the former injuriously irritates and cuts into the delicate mucus lining of the intestines, producing a chronic diarrhea which is mistaken for a laxative action. Contrary to the opinion of dietetic novices, whole wheat bread is not a health food. White flour products, corn starch and refined cereals, such as bolted cornmeal, pearled barley, white rice and commercial oatmeal, are very unhygienic for their embryo and cellulose have been removed, leaving only the pasty, constipating, and mucus-forming starch. By the acids which they generate in the blood, these foods deprive the body of calcium, needed by the bones, and phosphorus, required by the nervous system. It is for this reason that a diet consisting largely of refined cereals causes rickets, a bone disease, and beriberi, a nervous disease, which are due not to the fact that organic minerals are not added to the body as much as to the fact that those already in the body are dissolved for a period of fasting will not bring on these conditions. Dogs fed on white bread die sooner than those not fed at all. The use of white bread by children retards their normal physical and mental development. White flour has been bleached by chlorine, which is a poisonous gas. The human digestive organs were never designed for the assimilation of cereal starch. This is proven by a study of the as yet unperverted human being, the infant, who is incapable of digesting starch. Young children instinctively avoid cooked cereals. Starch changes into alcohol, and the continued use of bread leads to a carbon deposit in the stomach. It has been demonstrated that only 5% of starch is changed into sugar by the saliva 
the remainder being sent in an undigested form to the duodenum. The pancreas is then overworked to manufacture sufficient enzymes to change this into sugar. This results in diabetes, a more severe pancreas exhaustion than is ordinarily possessed by the average bread eater. The various grains are degenerate and dried up variations of a primordial grain, corn. Raw sweet corn, right off the stalk, is the most hygienic form of grain. Since corn has not the tendency to form calcareous deposits or to cause seminal emissions as have wheat and rye, it should be used as the staple grain. For those who are weaning off from the use of bread and cereals, the following tasty and nutritious unleavened corn bread may be recommended. It is made by mixing unbolted, stone-ground cornmeal, not the bolted and steel-cut kind, with water, adding olive oil and honey, and baking it in flat thin layers for about 10 to 15 minutes. This unleavened bread, eaten together with a raw vegetable salad, is an excellent cure for constipation. The fermentation of bread by yeast is a process of incipient rotting, while baking powder is an injurious chemical. Therefore, bread should always be eaten in an unleavened form. One subject to the bread-eating habit desires this food at every meal, but when no bread is eaten for a sufficient length of time, the craving for it disappears. This shows that bread is not naturally required by the human organism, and that the desire for it is an artificial one. Carob, St. John's bread, is a sun-baked bread which nature has provided for man to eat. It should be used instead of all other grains, including corn. While the starch of grain must be transformed by the enzymes of the saliva into maltose, and by those of the duodenum and small intestines, into dextrose, carob contains an invert sugar which is immediately transformed into dextrose and assimilated in the stomach. Grapes, however, are even superior to carob, for they contain pure dextrose, or grape sugar, in a fresh form. Grapes are the best substitutes for bread and cereals.